This is the promised follow-up video on the Loop Deck Live, one of the most useful and versatile accessories for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you haven't watched my first video, I strongly recommend that you do, and links in the notes below. And in this video, part one of a two-part series, we're going to be looking at the Microsoft Flight Simulator default profile, which has been updated. I'll show you where it is and how to get your hands on it. And secondly, and most importantly, I'll be showing you how to do a MIDI setup to get it ready for configuring in SPAD Next. In part two, we'll be jumping into SPAD Next and Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. First of all, a quick note of thanks to Joanna at LoopDeck for helping me understand the settings better, and to my German friend Schalk for his invaluable assistance with SPAD Next. At the end of my somewhat detailed introductory video, we had configured the Loop Deck Live as a CAP 140 autopilot, using elements from the default profile as well as keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The default profile has many different functions and is a very useful utility. The developer, Calibex, has updated his profile, fixed a few bugs and added in additional functions. At the time of recording, the Loop Deck profile available in the marketplace is still the old one. So I'll start off by showing you how to get your hands on it and how to install it. It's quick and easy process. To see what version you're on, click on the logo on the right hand side, then the settings icon, and the most recent version is 2.1. So let's get you updated. By your favorite browser, go to flightsimulator.com, link in the notes below. Under the Community tab, click on Forums and then select the spyglass from the top to search and type in the developer's name, Calibex. Click on the link that appears, and this is a thread created by the developer on the Loop Deck Live for the Microsoft Flight Simulator default profile. Scroll down about three quarters of the way, and there you'll see a link to the developer's latest release, version 2.1. Click on the link and it'll take you to the developer's GitHub site. I suggest you save the location to your favorites. The latest version will always be available here. And under the assets, click on the plugin and download. Save it somewhere safe on your hard drive. I've used the same location as I saved my profiles to. To do the update, make sure you've got Loop Deck software running in the background. Go to where you saved the downloaded file and double click it. You can now close this window and return to the Loop Deck software and you'll be prompted do you want to install. This will automatically overwrite your existing profile, but will not change any of the bespoke configurations you've already done. In effect, it's just expanding the library of the features available within the plugin. It takes a few moments to install. Once installed, it'll tell you if it's installed correctly, that install was successful, and the new version number is displayed. Change your active profile to the newly downloaded one, which will be MSFS, then you'll be able to look at the profile, see any new additions, and as mentioned, a number of bugs have been fixed in some of the previous configurations, mainly due to changes by Osobo Microsoft. If you can't see the logo, just change the visibility as I have just done. Now we can click on the various folders and see anything that's new, and if you've had a problem with any of the settings in the past, try them out again, they may have been changed. Please note this recording is early November, so it's before the release of Sim Update 11. We're done on the update, and now let's move on to set up the device for MIDI output for use in SPAD Next. First things first, we need to set up an empty profile. I'm currently on the CAP140 profile. Click on it, then the three dots in the top right hand corner, Create Empty Profile. Give it any name that you prefer. I'm just going to call mine MIDI Tutorial, and then hit the OK button. That's done. We want a completely empty profile, so we will unassign what's there for the buttons. It's just the top left, and we'll delete the assignments for the dials again, top left. There we are, they're gone. We now have a completely empty profile, and we're ready to start setting up for MIDI. The Loop Deck has an annoying habit of hiding the MIDI controls, so on the right hand side menu, click the slider bar icon. You can change what is and isn't visible. I want to see MIDI. There we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's better. Microsoft Flight Simulator does not inherently or natively recognize Loop Deck Live. So for advanced programming, other than the default profile or keyboard shortcuts, we take advantage of SPAD Next's ability 
to receive an output, MIDI or sound. As far as SPAD Next is concerned, it's just another electrical impulse. It can be recognized and acted on. More details on SPAD Next in my earlier video. So this step is to configure buttons and dials with MIDI outputs so SPAD Next can recognize it. The strength of SPAD Next lies in its ability to investigate and identify actions directly through SimConnect, making more complex configurations possible and complex third-party aircraft using complex or non-standard controls. Let's get started. Click on the MIDI icon and a new set of menus appear. And we have two options, MIDI Action and MIDI Dial Adjustment. MIDI Action is for buttons and is used for both the LED and non-LED buttons on the device. Dial Adjustment is fairly self-explanatory. It's for the rotary dials. It's possible to have more buttons and more dials than you'll ever need. As shown in the previous video, you can just create additional pages. OK, let's start with buttons. So from the right hand menu, we're going to select MIDI Action. Click on that and in the lower right hand, a new menu appears. As before, we can assign an icon to a particular action, either from an icon library or the Payware Icon City library, which is over 470 icons for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Or you can just browse on your PC for a PNG or JPEG file. I'm not going to bother with that in the interests of saving time. First, we need to determine how the note is going to be played. The two we're interested in is Note Play and Note Toggle for SPAD Next. The others are primarily for music devices and you don't need to worry too much about them. We'll do an example of both note play and note toggle for buttons. We'll start off with the one we'll use most of the time, that's note play. Next we have to select a different note for each button. And there is a massive variety available. For each assigned button you need to select a different note. This is very important. Otherwise you're going to end up getting conflicts. It's a good idea to keep a list of those you've selected. The note I've selected here is C-2. We can change the name so we can identify what we've assigned it to. As this is just a button press because it's note play, I'm going to rename it as press. Velocity is the loudness. I put in 50 as middle of the road. Too quiet and spat next won't pick it up. I recommend using 50 for all buttons. Duration is in milliseconds. I've experimented with this and I've found about 100 works most of the time. So I use 100 as default. Don't bother changing the channel. Leave it as one channel or channel one. That's it, we're done. We can now save. And once you've saved it, it'll appear under stored MIDI actions. There it is. Let's now go ahead and create another button but this time, instead of note play, we're going to make it note toggle. Choose a different note as before. Under type of action, we're going to choose toggle. And for velocity or loudness, I'm going to choose 50 again. Toggle has no note duration. Don't confuse the term toggle with that used in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Toggle in this instance means button pressed and held down until pressed again and then released. Most of the time you won't use this function, but I show it here in this tutorial. For those doing more complex configurations, this may be very useful in conjunction with other actions or events. I can now save this, and it's saved under Stored MIDI Actions. I've made an error here, I haven't renamed it, but that's okay, we can edit later on. You may find it handy here to click through the various assignments and check that you haven't duplicated any of the notes. If you have duplicated, there's a good chance that it will not allow you to save it anyway. We can now right click and hold down with the right mouse button and drag and drop them into any of the allocated button spaces we prefer. I forgot to rename it so I can edit it, called it toggle, hit save, and you can edit any of the buttons at any time. So we now have two buttons assigned. One is a press action, on and off. One is a toggle function, Press and it stays pressed until pressed again and released. You can at this stage drag and drop them to any position you like and resort them out to suit your preference. Moving the mouse to the top right, the three little dots, various actions are available and we can take it out by unassigning it. So it's immensely configurable at this point. I'll just put that back. We'll just quickly bring up SPAD next so I can demonstrate the difference between note play and note toggle. 
First of all, on my loop deck live in front of me, I'm going to press the note toggle button. The associated button in SPAD Next lights up and stays lit until I press it again to take it off. I'm now going to use the press button and you'll see the difference in the action. It's on and off immediately, just like a normal keystroke. Toggle again, press the button and it stays pressed. Now using the press button, I'm sure you get it by now. We're done with buttons, let's move on to dials. From the right hand menu we'll choose MIDI dial adjustment. And once again a configuration window is available in the lower right. As before we can rename it. In this case I'm just going to call it dial 1. Next we need to determine the action type. And for dials there's far fewer choices. Condition change set. Use this for all dials. The next setting can be a little bit confusing. It's currently set to modulation wheel or lever. By selecting the small down arrow, we'll see there's an immense range of different options, well over a hundred. And the names are basically meaningless for our use. They're designed for musical instruments. So ignore the name. Best practice is to choose a different one for each different dial. It's a bit like choosing a different note for the button presses. And once again, we don't have to worry about changing the channel. Leave it all as channel 1, or 1 channel. The last box remaining is value. And it shows a value between 0 and 127, with 63 being the midpoint. In my test, it doesn't seem to matter what value you put in here, but you do need a value, or you won't be given the option to save. Whilst not critical, a quick explanation. A value of 0 would be all the way to the left. A value of 127 would be all the way to the right. Value of 63 is in the middle and determines the starting point of the dial. In SPAD Next, it doesn't really make that big a difference and doesn't change your ability to configure it. A suggested default is 63, midpoint. We're done, we can save it and again it will appear under stored MIDI actions. Just for good practice, I'm now going to go ahead and create another dial. If you're following along, you can just pause it if you need to. Our two dials have now been created and as per the buttons we can now drag and drop them onto the dials and position them anywhere we like. You can move the action to a different dial, click on the dial to highlight the action, choose the selected item and drag and drop it and that function will have been moved. Unassigning is the same action as per the button. Just a note, buttons can be placed on the dials as well as they have a push function. Back to SPAD next. And on the loop deck, I'm just going to turn dial 1 to make sure it's registering. There it is, it's registering. And note it started in the center because I chose 63 as a midpoint. Again, to highlight that's not important for SPAD next. A value of 1 or 127 works just as well. As originally, this function was designed for a defined axis. And that is it. That's all we really need to know to go ahead and complete the setup as a MIDI device. One recommendation, which may well save you a considerable amount of time in the future. Set up all six dials and all 12 LED buttons, giving the name button 1, button 2, dial 1, dial 2 and so on. And save this as a profile. Then as you create different instruments for your aircraft, you can take this as the blank as it were, rename the buttons as needed and then configure in SPAD next. Here's another important point. You can change the position of the buttons and dials. At this point, no problem. But there are some limitations to you being able to do that within SPAD Next. So it's best to determine the layout, dial and button position for your selected instrument or function prior to configuring in SPAD Next. Once you've set up your buttons and dials or your blank, and you're ready to give SPAD next to go, make sure it's been identified. Here are a couple of essential points. On startup, go to settings, the cog icon. And from the menu that appears, select devices. And then select MIDI devices. And make sure that all the items there are enabled. Otherwise, the loop deck will not be identified. It may or may not say loop deck live. If it doesn't, you can just rename it. We're now ready to check and from the leftmost menu select devices and here should be all the buttons and dials that you may have configured and assigned to a note. 
So we're now ready to start configuring in SPAD next, and that will follow in part two. And that should be coming in just a couple of days. Just got to find the time to edit the video. In that video, we'll be building the CAP140 using SPAD next, and how we can configure the unit for the dual rotary dial functions. Stay tuned and don't forget to give the video a like if it was helpful. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well. See you soon. Bye for now.